Today we are talking about myocardial infarction and the horrible complications it can cause. In the specific case, we have a woman, she had chest pain for two days. Now she presents with severe dyspnea and she is in shock. The systolic blood pressure was only 90 millimeters of mercury. How does her echocardiogram look like? So in the apical views, we do see the apical long axis view. You see that there is terrible image quality. Actually, it's very hard to see the left ventricle at all. In the four chamber view, you get a better glimpse of the left ventricular structures and the left ventricle overall. You see that the basal and the mid segments, they are contracting hyperdynamic, but the apex shows definitely wall motion abnormalities. Moving on to the subcoastal views, you also can evaluate the IVC. The IVC is dilated and there is as you can see, no respiratory collapse at all. Furthermore, in the subcoastal for chamber view, we do not see significant pericardial effusion. So we, we do see probably a, a certain degree of free fluid around the right ventricle, but it's definitely not hemodynamically relevant. Furthermore, it's very hard to differentiate because we do not see the entirety of the right ventricular free wall if there are wall motion abnormalities of the right ventricle as well. So how can we help ourselves? How to optimize our image? Well, of course, we can use a contrast agent. In this contrast study, it becomes more clearer that there's truly something wrong with the apex. It's thin and there is no contractility at all. So in the contrast study, we do see that the apex is akinetic. What we did already visualize in the normal B-mode imaging, the Basal and the mid segments, they are hypercontractile. That also fits to the cardiogenic shock the patient is in. If we now focus even more towards the apex and we go back to B mode imaging, actually we do see in the apex there's a lesion in the supraapical cap. So this is possibly a complication of acute myocardial infarction by means of rupture. Now using two images, the B-mode image and the contrast enhanced image, we do see that the wall is very, very thin and there seems to be that there is a ventricular rupture, a septal rupture of the left ventricle. Furthermore, in more detailed imaging, it's also possible that we do see a pseudoaneurysm. A pseudoaneurysm can also be caused in acute myocardial infarction. In several views, we do see again an apical long axis view with contrast enhancement. There is a rupture of the left ventricular wall present. In more detail now, you see that LV rupture is actually happening in the apex. Here is the area where the rupture did happen. And if we use more views, we can see that even in contrast, we do see flow turbulence and that there is a hole in the interventricular septum of the left ventricle. Using color Doppler, now on the right side of the image, we do see that truly there is an ischemic VSD. So due to acute myocardial infarction, a large myocardial infarction, a STEMI, we see a complication that ischemia caused a VSD to appear, so a rupture of the myocardium. Several complications after acute myocardial infarction you have to think about when you are doing regular echocardiographies in acute patients. As we have seen, there can be a ventricular septal rupture, but also a papillary muscle rupture is a possible complication. Furthermore, pseudoaneurysm or aneurysm formation after the infarction and even left ventricular free wall rupture can happen.